one thing about the disciples that are incredibly uh, enjoyable, isn't it? They're just like us. Now, I used to think those guys were ridiculous, right? But, um, but I, when I would read their stories, i go, why can't you guys get it? But the problem was, is I already knew the end of the story and why they couldn't get it. But I find myself in the same position these guys are in all the time. I get in a situation, I don't know what the Lord's doing in that situation, and, I, and then I ask what I would call all these bizarre questions of the Lord. All right? And that's what they're doing in this situation. Philip, Jesus is just about to be crucified. They don't know how to deal with that. And so they think if they have a greater revelation of who God is, it'll sustain them. And so they say, show us the Father. And here's how Jesus responds. Don't you know me, Philip? Even after I've been among you such a, a long time, anyone who's seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I say to you are not my own. Rather, is the Father living in me, doing his work. All right? So Jesus is basically saying, when you see me, you see the Father. Now let's develop the, the Father heart. Turn your page with me real quick, and let's look here in the notes. There's some aspects we're going to look at at Jesus revealing the Father heart of God. Now, why, again, why is this so important when we talk about prophetic ministry? Because prophetic ministry, again, is not just what you say. We're going to learn that as the school goes on. In one sense, it's easy to prophesy because you, you start understanding how the love of God works. But it's not enough about what we say. It's the character of the person, too, represents the Lord correctly. And so we need to see how Jesus represented the Father so we can understand how God expects us to represent him in prophetic ministry. So the first one is this. Number one, it's just some scriptures. Uh, the first one is compassion. And that's based out of Matthew chapter 9, verse 35. And let's go ahead and read it here. Jesus went through all the town and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. Now, when he saw the crowd, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Now, the word compassion here and the way that we understand it from the original language is it means literally not sympathy. It has a connotation of sympathy, but it also means an empty vessel. Like if I was standing here with a cup, the word compassion means literally God pouring his heart into the Son of God and filling him to fullness so that he can minister out of that. And so the idea literally is as he sees all these hurting people and the Father fills him with compassion and lets him see people that are hurting and broken. And compassion not only means being filled with God, but it also means the power to relieve the suffering. That's the difference between God's compassion and man's compassion. Man's compassion is based out of an emotional response, isn't it? When I have compassion on someone, I have sympathy for him, and I, and I just feel sorry for him, but I don't have the power to deliver them. God's compassion breaks our heart for the suffering of, of people, and then he fills us with his presence to actually cause uh, his deliverance to come in that situation.